Getting right into the video, I am making my own candles today in partnership with Michaels. If you're familiar with my channel, then you know that I love DIY projects. I have a whole playlist about it, and Michaels has always been the number one choice for arts and crafts and when I'm looking for DIY supplies. Not even kidding, sometimes I'll find myself just going up and down the aisles looking for materials to spark some inspiration when I'm looking for something new to work on, so I'm very happy about this collaboration. My latest project, especially for the new year, is candle making. I love having candles all over my home. Uh, so much that I go through quite a few of them and that definitely adds up. Uh, so I had the idea to test out making candles out of candle containers that I'd finished, containers that I'd thrifted, and see if I can make this a regular thing, be a little bit more sustainable and keep up with my candle obsession. I went a little crazy and bought what I thought I might need, like candle wax, a wick spool, thermometer, I'll link everything I used in the description, but it's all from Michaels. I'm always able to find everything I need there, so if you're curious about learning how to make candles or any kind of arts and crafts project really, definitely take a look and shop through their site or in store. I picked up three types of candle wax because I've only tried candle making once before with like microwavable wax, and I wasn't sure which one would be best. I got a block of coconut wax, beeswax, and soy wax flakes as well as this candle pouring can. This whole process was very experimental. In theory, it seems like a very easy DIY, but I quickly found that that was not the case, uh, but we'll get to that. This part right here is probably where I had the most trouble. Because of the shapes and sizes of my containers, placing and centering the wicks weren't as straightforward as say if I had just used standard little jars. I kind of eyed the length of the wick that I needed for each container, cut that off, and then pulled the wick through one of those wick clips, tightening it with my fingers, and just trying to keep it as flat as possible so it would stand straight when I placed it. I bought a wick centering tool, but it didn't quite fit right on any of these funky looking containers. That worked much better on like a small jar. I also took a little of the melted wax, placed that at the bottom so my wicks would stick, and then held that in place as best as I could with some chopsticks. The big marble vase looking thing took me the longest because it was so deep. Just took me a couple tries before the wick was somewhat centered. I think I need more practice with shorter containers before I try to do another big candle. But back to the soy wax, the melting point was at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit, 54 degrees Celsius, and once that was melted, I wanted to try a few different methods of scenting the wax. I had some dried lavender in my apartment, so I took a little of that and sprinkled the lavender buds into the wax, but it really wasn't that fragrant, so I just ended up using the lavender as a textural element and using this lavender scented fragrance oil that I found in the candle aisle at Michael's. I think I ended up putting about 30 drops of oil to about four cups of soy wax flakes. I didn't wanna to put too much though, since that could be a burning hazard if there's an excessive amount of oil. But right after, I just took that off the heat and immediately poured the wax into my candle holder. The lavender buds looked kinda of wonky, so I just used the stem to fan them out a little more. And since I had a little wax left over, I poured the rest into a jar I had in the kitchen. Okay. 
Continuing with the experiment, I wanted to melt the coconut wax for the large marble vase, and I just ended up breaking it into chunks and throwing the entire two pounds into my can. The directions stated that it would be at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82.2 degrees Celsius for this wax to be completely melted, so quite a bit higher than the soy wax. For the scent, I really wanted to use a couple sprigs of rosemary and some of the pine from a leftover garland I had from the holidays. I just cut up some of the pine needles, a little of the stem, and I let that sit on low heat for about 45 minutes until it starts to smell really fragrant. When I was pouring the wax into my container, I accidentally filled it too high and it ended up knocking my wick out of place and messing it up. The chopsticks got all waxy, so I had to rush to replace it. I was seriously panicking at first, but Michael's team made it clear to me that it didn't matter if it didn't come out perfect of the first try. Art isn't just about the finished result, it's the process of getting there, you know, it's in the making. So I just did the best that I could and got it together by wrapping the wick a different way. I also had some leftover wax to make an extra little candle as well. For the last candle, I wanted to melt the beeswax and I only did half a pound since the container I had left was the smallest. This one melted at around 143 to 147 degrees Fahrenheit or 62 to 64 degrees Celsius. And I didn't bother scenting this one because it smelled so good. It had a very earthy, sweet honey scent to it. So once it was melted, I just poured it immediately into the candle holder. Since I wanted to give my candles time to set, I let them sit overnight and then checked on them in the morning. As you can see, I had a few issues. The lavender soy candle I thought looked the prettiest. Out of all my candles, it was the only one that didn't sink. The texture was the softest and easiest to work with, and the lavender scent was subtle, but it did come through, which I was happy about. That rosemary pine coconut wax candle totally sunk in the middle. And I thought that might have been because I messed up while I was pouring. Uh, but when I looked at the little candle that I made with the leftover wax, I did notice the same issue. It seems like this wax is really sensitive to air bubbles. And I think I might have had more success if I had heated the container beforehand since it seemed to set really fast. Or uh, maybe taken shifts of pouring it rather than just going all in one go. But I'm not really sure. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I ended up taking some of the wax from the smaller candle to remelt on the stove and try to fill in that little gap. The scent of this one was also a little stronger than the soy candle. Lastly, the beeswax candle. This one sunk a little, but I really loved the look of the texture, the color, and the smell of this wax. I ended up melting a little more of it so I could try to top it off and level it a little more. And this is the finished result. The coconut wax candle still had a bit of a sinking issue, but I really love how these turned out. I want to continue doing this and practicing with different methods and scents, maybe colors next time. I hope you enjoyed watching me make some candles. Thank you to Michaels for sponsoring, and don't forget to check the description box for all the materials and tools I used, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!